I take care of all, I uh, take care of all the documentation and also the visa processing of the students. And I welcome you all to the team. And uh, thank you, sir, for giving me an opportunity. Thank you. So uh, now this was a brief introduction about everyone. So now I will be explaining about the team. In our team, we have um, Manpreet Kurana. You all should be aware of these names and uh, everything about them. Like he is an ICRC certified immigration consultant consultant in Canada and he is even the director just hold on okay so who is an ICRC certified immigration consultant from Canada and he is the director for Kurana Communications, Zeal Educator, and True Blue Immigrations in Canada. True Blue. Okay. So next is Jaspreet Kurana, myself. Both Manpreet and Jaspreet, we were dentists by profession in India, but now we have changed our profession to educational consultants. So here I hereby I am introducing myself as well. Uh, I am the director of WMES, that is Vigru Mayor Education Services India. Okay, and I'm working as an admin assistant with Zeal Educare Private Limited as well in Canada. Next, we have uh, Dipali Ji, Dipali Kohli. She already introduced herself and she is also working as an admin in the team in Canada. Then we have Barkha with us, who is also working in admin team from India. We welcome we welcome Abhinav and Ratika today. Okay. So now let's move ahead. The motive of the company Number one, we help students to get an admission to the esteemed universities. Okay, so we help students to get an admission in, in esteemed schools in Canada, UK, USA, and Australia. Preferably, we will be uh, working for Canada. However, we also have UK, USA and Australia with us. So you guys can keep a note with you that we are working in these four countries, preferably with Canada. Why Canada? Why Canada? Because uh, in Canada, we can help students in uh, getting an admission as well as the PR, that is the permanent residency. Apart from this, we are also helping students to get the post-graduation work permit after completion of their education. Okay. Apart from this, we also help in immigrations. Immigrations like we help people to get PR. Apart from that, we help people to get LMIA. We also help people to get work permits and so on. I think Manpreet is also online now. Let me check. Uh, yeah, he's there. He's just connecting his audio as well. And my father, Mr. Manmohan Singh, is also with us. I have kept them on mute position because some voice was coming from behind. So, Manpreet, are you there? Can you hear me? Hanji, brother, how are you? Fine, thank you. So, uh, Manpreet, this was a training session that was planned today. So, we have just started before five minutes and uh, like we had an introduction with everyone. So, I would request you to kind of introduce yourself and please ask Papa also to unmute his mic and then he will introduce himself as well.
Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Manpreet Khurana. So uh, I'm the regulated Canadian immigration consultant. Uh, I've been practicing uh, immigration here in Canada and uh, I have uh, my license here. Uh, I deal in uh, all the applications related to immigration uh, like study permit, work permits, permanent residency applications, uh, even the spousal sponsorship applications, uh, refugee applications and all sorts of immigration services. So rest, I think uh, Dr. Jaspreet have already explained, um, you know, about us, about our companies. Uh, so he will continue further. Thank you. Thank you, Manpreet. Uh, I would request Mr. Manmohan Singh, my father, to kindly introduce you. Papa, are you on the line? On the line? I am Manmohan Singh. Yeah. I am Manmohan Singh, dad of Manpreet and Jaspreet Khurana. And uh, I would like to say you have to continue your session. Thank you. Okay. So now let's start. So the motive of the company was to get an admission in the esteemed schools in Canada, UK, USA and Australia, preferably in Canada. We also help students to get the post-graduation work permit. We also help people to migrate to Canada, specifically for PR, LMIA, work permits, as Manpreet has already explained. Okay. So today the session will be specifically for the study permits. Okay. Study permits. Now, when a student is coming to study in Canada, in countries like Canada, UK, USA and Australia, so there are two types of students that we can find. Number one is the onshore student. Onshore students. Onshore students means those students who have already landed in Canada. Either they are on TRV, that is the tourist visa, or they are already on study visa in some other school or some other university in Canada. So they will be counted as onshore students. So they are the bread and butter for us because we don't require to file the visa for them. Okay, they are already in Canada. So we will just file an application to different schools in Canada and we get an offer letter and get an admission and that's all. And we get commissions from the universities in uh, like in exchange of the admissions. Okay, so this is onshore students. The other are the international students international students these are those students who are a resident of uh, countries like india and they want to study in canada okay so they are the international students so we need to file visa for them that is the study visa study visa okay any questions till now i hope it's clear to everyone Hanji sir, it's clear. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, Ritika ji, you are a total new to the team, so you can ask your queries anytime, anywhere, okay? Because Abhinav yeah. ji is also working with me and uh, other team members are also working with me already. So you can ask your questions whenever you have any queries, fine? Ji ji, sure. Thank you. Okay, so we have two types of students, onshore students and international students. Now, next is the target audience. Now, who uh, will sir, be... ek word tha, I -M -I -A. What is that? This is LMIA. This is labor. Uh, like it's a work permit. It's a type of work permit. Okay. 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 Yeah. So we will be discussing it later on. Basically, these are all types of immigration uh, services that we are providing, which Manpreet is taking care of. Today, we will be discussing about study permit, but you must be aware of all these words. Okay. So PR is permanent uh, residency. LMI is a type of work permit, I should say. And uh, labor market impact migration services. Then work permits are like uh, we are helping people to get work. That is like trans companies or sometimes shifting from one country to other. Okay. Okay. And ICRC? ICRC is basically, it's a company that is helping people to uh, migrate Canada. They are the licensed authorized company, I should say. Okay. okay. I'll show you on net. Yeah. Manpreet, are you there? Okay. Yeah. So ICCRC is the organization. So uh, anything related to immigration, uh, you know, you have to deal with ICCRC. Um, so it's a regulatory body in Canada which regulates uh, the immigration processes, right? So, for example, uh, in India, you know, uh, when you talk about any of the lawyers, so we have a regulatory body for the lawyers. For dentists, we have a regulatory body, which is Dental Council of India, DCI. So similarly, uh, in Canada, 
this is a regulatory body which regulates all the laws uh, you know and the rules and regulations for immigration okay okay amanpit kindly we were uh, give a brief detail about lmie and work permit also she was asking me okay so lmie is a labor market impact assessment uh, this is a type of certification uh, which is given to the employers in canada who want to hire people uh, from outside canada for example uh, i'm running you know a restaurant business here in canada right and i need uh, a cook indian cook but i'm not able to find an indian cook in canada so what i will do is i'll file an application with a provincial uh, body which is service canada uh, I'll file an application and uh, I will ask them that I'll tell let them know that I'm not able to find an Indian cook here in Canada and I want to bring uh, the Indian cook from outside Canada. So I'll file this application. They will give me a certification, approval certification uh, that says that now I can hire somebody from outside Canada. And based on that, I can hire somebody from, say, for example, India. And uh, that person uh, whom I hire, they can apply for a work permit based on that. And they can come to Canada for two years and they can be on work permit. Okay, okay Ritika ji, it's Thank clear? You. Yes, clear. All clear. Any questions from any side? Uh, no, sir. All clear. Okay, fine. So, now move ahead. Uh, the target audience. Like, who will be the target audience for us? They will be number one, class 12th students. Okay. So they are the bread and butter for us because uh, the chances of getting visa for class 12th student is nearly 99%. So, and it's very easy. Okay, the government of Canada allows the uh, students from class 12th very easily because you know that they get a lot of uh, services from these students because they will be serving the country. Uh, they are freshers and they will be helping this country to, you know, progress and they will be paying the taxes and all. So they, because of all these reasons, they promote class 12 students a lot. Next target audience will be bachelors. Now, if, uh, sorry, I missed one thing to tell you. If they are class 12 students, we will be helping them to join bachelors in Canada or they have certain diploma courses, which they guys can join. Diploma course okay now bachelors and diploma courses they are eligible for class 12th students but the thing is we will uh, encourage students to go for a bachelor only because if we are going for an immigration post completion of the course then it's very difficult to get a pr if they are uh, they have completed their diploma courses right manpreet manpreet are you there think is yeah because he can guide us why uh, the bachelors are important so i think he is not there so i will like to guide you guys uh, bachelor is important because uh, they help in getting permanent residency there is a system of crs i hope everyone is clear about it crs 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 is comprehensive ranking Hello? system yeah manpreet are you there Anji, sorry, yeah. No worries. Manpit, kindly guide us why we should go for bachelors in comparison to diploma courses in case of students. Okay. Class. Yeah, because there are more points for a bachelor's degree as compared to a diploma, right? So uh, there is a, uh, you know, portal which is known as Comprehensive Ranking System Portal. This is a portal for express entry applications like people who want to get, um, you know, permanent residency directly. Uh, why we call it express entry is because express means fast. So this is the fastest uh, way to get permanent residency directly, uh, you know, for Canada. Uh, people who have to be eligible for this, they have to have, uh, you know, um, so it's a scoring system. Scoring system is based on your education, your age, your work experience, your IELTS score. So IELTS is the English uh, exam which you give, uh, you know, which the which is based on four modules: reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So you get various bands, your various marks, and then based on that you get your points, you know, in the CRS calculator. So if you are getting a bachelor's degree, it's better as compared to a diploma because diploma holds uh, less lesser points as compared to a bachelor's degree. Uh, even master's is more like much better 
there, there the, the maximum marks or the points is for the master's degree so people who have already done bachelor's we ask them to go for masters uh, people who have who have just graduated from grade 12 we we ask them to go for bachelor's as compared to diploma because when they go for bachelor's they get more points and eventually in the future they will get permanent residency now what students think is students think you know why to spend more money and more time on the bachelor's degree when i can get one year diploma with a lesser cost you know and lesser time duration but the problem is when when you know when they apply for the postgraduate work permit and permanent residency in the future then they are not able to get sufficient points and they're not able to get permanent residency which is very very important so we we just guide them we have to guide the students we have to uh make them understand what is crs uh you know what what will happen in the future because uh, it's not a short-term process it's a long-term process so long term as in like you we have to wait you know they have to wait for the permanent residency if they come to canada and eventually in the future they're not getting permanent residency so you know they will be after us right that you didn't guide us you know when you were telling us about the study permits you didn't tell us uh, initially you know and it, it's all about their future right so the future is in our hands we have to make them understand everything we have to guide them and the decision is in their hands but we should guide them we should let them know the facts so whatever they decide it's up to them then Okay, thank you very much. I think it's clear to everyone. Yeah, yes. yes sir. Okay, fine. So if we have class 12 students, we will uh, promote them for bachelors in comparison to diploma because as Manpita has already explained. Now, if the student is already bachelors, so they are the second targeted students, they can come here for masters or post-graduation certificate or diplomas again the reason is same we have to promote masters more in compare to the pg certificate or the diplomas pg certificate is post graduation certificate or post graduation diplomas masters is always better because they have a more weightage in compare to these certificate courses okay so always prefer to go for masters but if a student is forcing you that he wants to go or she wants to go for a pg certificate course only then there is no way out so we will never say no to anyone we will guide them we will explain them we will tell them clearly that uh, if you are going for a pg certificate or a pg diploma then the chances of getting a pr is less but if the student is adamant to join masters or sorry to join these courses only so we will not say no and they we will help them to come for these courses only okay now next target student is target audience is the masters if the student is already masters okay so we can help them to come to canada and join another masters okay masters in another field okay so these are the another target audience wherein if the student is already masters so they can come for masters in another field okay now but in this case uh, yeah. but in this case uh, you know there is a chance that their visa can be refused uh, the reason is because they have already done one, one masters right uh, now it has to be very strategic uh, how you know uh, because once they have completed one masters if they want to come for another degree which is also masters it can be like it has to be very much related to their entire work history or entire education and whatever they did uh, because you know the visa officer will um, will have to no, the visa visa officer will have you know will be looking for a study plan so the study plan is it has to be like related right so when you go for another masters um, uh, it is a very tricky case um, you know uh, we should evaluate before taking this case so uh, the best way out is once you get any case any of the cases related to any like even grade 12 or bachelor's or master's um, it's better if you uh, you know get all the information from the student uh, you know we have already prepared some information sheets uh, and you know document checklist so get those information sheets filled by the students get the documents required documents then send this to uh, to our emails we will evaluate the case and we'll see what particular courses we can target and 
is the student, you know, uh, will the student be good for us? Because if the student has already done master's and there is a long gap, study gap, then the student might not be suitable for any of the studies uh, because there will be high chances of refusal. So if you take those cases, uh, we have to let the student know that there are high chances of refusal. But still, if the student wants to go for study permit, we can help them. But uh, it will be all on the student's discretion. So in that case, we will send an email to the student that, you know, that we are not recommended recommending to come on a study permit at this age and, you know, with, the, with this study gap. But still, if you are, you know, uh, you want to persuade and you want to like you want to pursue this particular course uh, with your decision. So you have to give the cons consent that, yes, you know, you agree um, for another master's degree. So this is very, very important because in future, if there's a refusal, the student might, you know, might get frustrated. You know why there is a refusal. He might be after you, you know, because you will be the face uh, talking to the student or dealing with the student. So in that case, it's better to have the cons consent from the student that the student has already um, been informed that there are very high chances of refusal very very high and uh, you know we we don't recommend going for a study permit but still the student is forcing us to go for it then we we will go for it with the consent in hand so get the consents for everything like whatever we are doing we have to get the consent whatever we are recommending that Sometimes the student will say, no, I want a diploma. I don't want a, a master's degree. So we'll have to send them a consent, you know, email that, you know, we are recommending this, but if you would like to go for this, kindly give a consent that you would like to go for it. So that we have written proofs from the student that we recommended this, but the student was not willing to understand. The student was not, uh, you know, uh, was not uh, even in spite of the fact that he was aware of all the information we provided, uh, but the student wanted to go ahead. So then only we'll go ahead. Because this is this is a very sensitive matter, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, if the visa is refused, the students, you know, they will get a lot of frustration. Um, and, uh, you know, when they are frustrated, uh, like initially we take the student, oh, oh, take it, take it, you know, he's coming. It's it's a good lead, you know, take it in hand. But but to be honest, if it is not a, if, if the student is not a good candidate, um, it is it is it is a bad uh, it will build a bad repo for our company as well. Right. Because eventually if there are more and more refusals uh, people will think you know that there are a lot of refusals from this company why they are not they are not doing good work or something like that yeah, right so we don't want to get into those kind of things to to build the rap rapport of the company we need to get good students uh, with good academic scores they are also very important so for example if you are um, you know taking a student if the student is uh, has scored you know 45% marks or you know get got uh, like did grade 12 in like three or five attempts right so those kind of students are not a very good candidate for a study permit because the visa officer will see you know that the student was not able to clear grade 12 uh he tried you know five times for grade 12 or two times for grade 12 how come he'll he'll be able to complete this particular course in canada which is like uh, international standard you know colleges or international student uh, standard universities right so those kind of things are very very important so it's very important that when you talk to the student when you see the case you also screen it uh, because we will be doing that as well but it's better if you screen it and you know then you send it to us and you know let us know that this is the scenario you know this uh, but but don't leave any student um, again um, i know you know there are a lot of things wherein we can work upon uh, so for example if the academic history is not good then there are other options but we need to understand first now the other options can be like you know we can take some courses which are for those students uh, who have very less academic scores for example somebody who has scored 50 percent marks or 55 percent marks uh, you know and then he wants to come to canada then what we do is we have some universities or colleges in canada which give uh, which provide courses for those students with low academic Academic scores, right? For example, foundation scores, right? So what we do is we, you know, explain it in the explanation letter or submission letter or statement of purpose. You know, what we explain is we let the visa officer know uh, that, you know, see this particular student, he has scored, you know, for 50% marks or 60% marks. But this student is taking a foundation course and based on that foundation course, he will get be getting admission to the main course. So the student is not coming for the main course directly because he was not, he will not be able to perform. But if he completes this foundation, right, he will be able to get admission in, for example, MBA or BBA. 
right so in that case the visa officer will not refuse the application because the visa officer knows you know that we have you know did all this leg work and you know and the student is not going directly for bba uh, with this particular percentage uh, and you know you might be thinking that why if there is like the percentage so less why the you know why the student will get admission now there are many colleges or universities in canada which are like mainly the private universities and uh, colleges what they do is they give admission to every student but getting admission is not like is not our main you know aim after the admission we have to apply for study permit then only they can travel to canada now even spite of the fact they get admission to the college the study permit might be refused you know so we have to be very careful with the academics with the student with the background uh, what the student is doing what the student has already completed what the student has done so this is very very important now i'll, I'll hand over to uh, dr jaspreet thank you thank you manpit for explaining us so nicely so i have uh, you know i have written i have typed side by side so that you guys can have the details and i will be uh, sharing this word file with you guys on whatsapp very soon okay so these are the various uh, points that you have to be very careful while taking a student for study permit in canada okay so the main thing is that we have to analyze the profile at the basic stage properly so that the success rates are high and it brings a good name to the company as well as to our family and we all can grow only when the success rate of visa getting visas is more okay so these are the points that you have to be very careful now there is another target class that is bachelors with work experience or masters with work experience i'm talking about the work professionals okay i'm talking about work professionals they are those people who have uh, graduated from India, uh, like even either they are masters or they are bachelors and they are working with a company or running their own business for say three years or two years or one year or more than three years as well. So they are also a candidate for study visa in Canada. However, we will try to get PR for them if they are they come under the category of good CRS scores, but if they are not under CRS scores, then we can even go for work permit or sorry, study permit for them. Okay. So, like for study permit, the age ranges between uh, say around uh, 17, 18 to up to 26, 28 years of age. So, the student can be 17 years to 28 years. This should be the age range wherein you can select the student if they are more than this then the chances of getting visa refusal is always more however we have helped students of around 36 years of age to get a study permit in canada like for example we have manpreet kaur who was a 36 year old student from india she has already done her masters and she was a work professional and we got success in getting an admission to algoma university in toronto and she got the visa as well and she is now in canada Okay, so this... we also had Dr. Jaspreet Kurana who also got the visa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Me, myself, I was also at the age of 38 years when I got the study visa and I uh, got admission in Royal Lords University in Canada, in Victoria. Thank you, Manpreet. Okay, so the basic age range is 17 to 28 years. Okay, now let's move further. Now, if we are going for grade 12 students, so we have to first check whether the student has what subjects like subjects in class 12th we have to be very careful in class 12th subjects in class 12th okay they can be from a medical background background they can be from non-medical as well okay and they can even be from commerce background back ground okay so for medical ground students it is very difficult to get a medical course in canada because uh, the medical uh, field is regulated in canada so it's very difficult to get the courses related to medicals however we have uh, certain courses like bachelors in science uh, bachelors in pathology all these courses are available but it is very difficult to get an admission and get the pr later on so they should have a good ielts score the basic eligibility criteria is always on a higher end if it, uh, when it comes to medical. Non-medical, we have uh, bachelors of 
commerce bachelor of business administration bba i will be explaining all these courses in detail in the next session today it's just an introductory session wherein you will get an introduction who are the target audience for whom you guys will be working and how to select a student how to make the target audience and who, what all cases you should take okay and also um, i'll just add one more point um, any student who has a study gap of more than five years right so they are very difficult cases so we have to be um, very much careful and we have to evaluate and analyze those cases in detail and then we'll apply for study performance okay so handled to be handled with care Okay, so any student with study gap more than five years are most difficult. They should be handled with care. Any questions till now? No. No, sir. No. Okay, perfectly fine. So, uh, we will be ending today's session because it's very late in India. So, we will be taking a series of sessions wherein we will be giving you a proper training about everything. This was an introductory meeting wherein we are introducing everyone and we are introducing you to the field wherein you are jumping to work on. Uh, I would request Papa to speak few words if he wants to. Papa, are you there? Yeah, yeah. I'm you here. Can yes. I want to... You can speak in Hindi also, Papa. Yeah. I would like to say that as many of our members who are with us, ये सब लोग इस बात का खास ध्यान रखेंगे कि जितने भी ज्यादा से ज्यादा स्टूडेंट्स हम ला सकते हैं अपनी कंपनी को हम टॉप मोस्ट शिखर पे पहुंचा सकते हैं वो हमें सब ने एफर्ट्स करनी है वी विल ट्राई आवर लेवल बेस्ट एवरीवन जब हम सब पूरी मेहनत करेंगे और मंत्री वीजा उसमें पूरी फील्ड में पूरी मेहनत करेंगे तो हम वी कैन अचीव समथिंग मोर ये हमारा एक फर्ज भी बनता है और मेरी सबको ब्लेसिंग्स भी हैं आशीर्वाद भी है ये सब लोग जब मेहनत करेंगे तो उसका फल हमें जरूर 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 मिलता है Thank you, Papa. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, brother. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jaspreet Khurana uh, for arranging such a wonderful meeting and making all understand, you know, what we'll be doing and what we are and, you know, what is our future prospect and how we can, you know, uh, get, you know, into this business and, uh, you know, earn good money. And also in the in the next series of sessions, um, you know, he will be explaining all the, you know, insights and details and we will we'll be taking some cases as well in these meetings. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jaspreet. Thank you. Thank you, Manpreet. So, uh, as Manpreet told us that next time we will be discussing about the future aspects. We will be studying about how to make business. Okay. So, the next session will be on Monday, uh, same time. Okay. So, we will be continuing from Monday as well. Uh, but Sunday, because because Sunday everyone is on off and everyone needs a break. So we will be starting from Monday, then continuing to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. There will be five sessions and we will complete the whole course. Okay. Thank you everyone Thank for you, joining sir. the meeting. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye-bye, Abhinavji. Bye, Ritika. Bye, Barkha. Bye, Bye. Bye Papa. Bye. Thank you, Bye. 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 Bye.